so we are in San Francisco today for our investor board meeting. We might get wrecked today, so we'll see how it goes. So we're about to meet with our lead investor, uh, Yuri Kim at Forerunner Ventures. They were our lead investor in our $5 million seed round, which we raised at a $25 million valuation. We're looking forward to chatting with them. They always have really good advice. They've built really big companies before that have been very successful that we look up to. So yeah, that's how I'm feeling. I feel similar. I'm slightly less uh, stressed and more excited about the meeting. One of our goals is to uh, make you a ton of money, and I think we are somewhat on track given the, the circumstances and the environment. And uh, today we'll share our progress. It's been the best quarter we've had so far. Most amount of customers, most amount of new sign up, most amount of money that we've made for creators. So um, we'll chat about everything in this area and um, figure out how to run the next year. Yeah. All right, so we're here at the Forerunner office now. They've got a really nice office, so we'll give you a tour. Just the line of finance and tech pros in front of us. They're all just wearing Patagonias. Thank you. So I'm excited to see how few people are in the office. <laughs> the joke about VCs is they don't actually work hard. So we'll see how many of them are actually in the office today. Taylor, how are you doing? Welcome back, dude. I heard you, uh, here, give me a hug. Yeah, how are you? Well, how have you been? To see you. Tyler, how, how are you, man? You want to be in our YouTube video really quickly? Sure, why not? All right, this is Alex. Alex, what do you do here? I am an investor here. Cool. Yeah. And you invested in Sam back in the day. That's right. Yeah, me, Yuri, and Jason. Yeah. What, uh, what was your favorite part about the investment? I mean, for creators, by creators, right? Love it. Like, Love the it. fact that you have the background. Yeah. Yeah. The bridge is the best part when I was here the first time. Blew my mind. Like, this is how fridges need to be done. Which one's the fridge? There's just so. So, so this is their snack. Clearly, room. you did not pay attention. This is their this snack. This is room. the fridge. I know They're... exactly where the fridge is. So we got to do. So <laughs> we're manifesting that we have a fridge as clean and as nice and as stocked as this. It's actually not a crazy stock right now. Yeah. Oh, this is the fridge. Oh I was yeah. Thinking. This is okay, this so is now, yeah. This there's is two the... fridges. <laughs> Look at the guys, 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 guys. Look at the... <laughs> So this is what happens when you raise a billion dollar fund. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's go check out the boardroom and then we'll uh, sit down and walk through the deck. This is the boardroom. It's really nice. It's just also, for some reason, also stocked with snacks. <laughs> That's the office. That's what happens. They got a book. Oh, they have a book. Oh, and it's their portfolios. Let's see if we're in here. I don't know. We probably didn't make it. We're not big enough yet. Yeah, we didn't make it. Glossier, one of their big hits. Dollar Shave Club, LA Represent, Chime, like one of the biggest fintech successes of late. All right. Manifesting that we'll be in the, what, 20, 2024. 2024 issue. We'll already be big yeah. enough. Let's do it. So. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the presentation we actually put together for our investors before the meeting starts. But basically it's just an update on our last financial quarter, which is quarter one of this year in 2023. And the key thing we're thinking about is this question here. But basically we have something that's starting to work. How do we basically 10X that is this whole definition of this word scale. So how we start things off always is, I have no idea how to use this clicker, but how we start things off always is we have a working clicker, which, <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. All right, we're gonna click with the laptop instead. We always start with our financials. So basically how we think about our business is a couple of different things. Number one, we always plot how many free trials we're signing up. Every day. Basically how many people are, are interested in staying and signing up for a free trial. And then that eventually after that free 14 day trial we have, it converts into a number of new customers that we end up adding that are part of our subscriber base, right? So Stan is a subscription based model where for just $29 a month, you basically get a bunch of other softwares you would have paid like $200, $300 a month for. And so right now, you know, we ended the quarter at 6,000 active customers. We're already almost up to 7,000 by the end of this month, we're, we're a month later, uh, which translates, if you basically do the math, 6,000 customers times our subscription revenue. Basically, if you annualize that, if you take how much we, we would make in a single month, um, that's about $2.4 million in annual recurring revenue that we ended March with. Now, on top of that, we track a couple other metrics like our growth, for example, month over month, as well as how much money our creators are making every month on stand, which is, this is actually my favorite metric. This is the one I care the most about. It's super cool that like 
all of our creators are making literally millions of dollars on stand every single month that they're using to pay the bills, take care of their family, build their own career. Like this is the best part of stand. And so this next slide is actually just an update on where we are in April so far. So one month into Q2, where we're just reporting a lot of our metrics that I had mentioned before. So the number of trials we have, how many people convert and activate off of a trial and end up being a, a paid user. We have our total active customer base, our, uh, our total annualized recurring revenue, basically just more statistics that investors really care about when they think about analyzing investment and whether or not it's performing. Now, one thing that really matters for investors right now in this economic recession is cash burn. We're a startup, so we're not yet profitable yet. We do plan to get there this year. And so we always dedicate basically a full slide to how we're doing in terms of our road to profitability. Now, I will stay for this because we're doing well. I decided to just troll my investors, which is I did this for cash burn in our slide here. Um, <laughs> just me being kind of troll. But the only reason we're able to do this is because on the next slide, I actually go through what our actual cash burn is. Um, currently, we have $1.8 million of cash in the bank. Um, our average monthly burn is about 80K per month because you know we're this is our this is our revenue, these are our costs, and so therefore this is our profit. This number is going up and this number isn't going up as fast. So basically, we're gonna be fine on this front for the most part, unless something goes crazy wrong, which <laughs> let's hope it doesn't. Um, and so that's why like, I feel more comfortable like trolling my investors with those gifs, but um, the other way to think about this is like, this is me and Vitaly. We're scrappy immigrant kids. We've got a ton of runway still. Um, and we also, on this expense number here, we have a ton of room to cut as well if we really, really need to and things get e worse for some reason. So this is the cash picture of, of where we are today as a startup. I don't feel incredible about it. I'd obviously love to be super profitable right now, uh, but we're on the journey there. And so far, I think we should be fine, especially if we just like keep working hard and keep serving our customers. But yeah, that's our cash burn picture. And this is a really important thing that VCs and investors are gonna look at, especially in a recession. So all of those financials lead us to what you're actually about to see in our board meeting, which are a bunch of different discussion topics of us figuring out how we wanna continue growing the business going forward and some of the challenges we're facing as a company. So at number one, is our content organization where we as a company are really proud of the fact that we're creators ourselves. Like we get to say that we're made for creators by creators. And I, I genuinely do think that's why we do so well is because we just understand our customer better than everyone else. But as part of that, one thing that we're really struggling with is we make all this content, but in a recession, when we're talking about cash burn, for example, you have to get to profitability on all fronts. And so we're spending a lot of money investing in content. So um, supporting creators to make content for us, making hiring people to make content for us. Basically, we need to figure out how to get that content to not only be great content, but also generate returns for our business or else we just can't keep it afloat. Now, beyond that, topic number two is really about hiring in general, where basically, Vitaly and I are realizing like we're first time founders, we're still figuring it out. There's tons of gaps in our current skill set of like how to even expand marketing. Sorry, I just stuttered because I was like, oh my God, there's so many, but um, how do we even like lead and manage a team? How do we take care of our team? We need someone on the people side to just help us invest in our team. There's so many gaps here that I wanna to talk to our investors about specifically because they have so much more pattern recognition around the gaps that other companies like us have gone through. So they can help us isolate out like, oh, you should hire like maybe this person and that person and we'll see where we need to go from there. And now the last thing here is actually something that everything else rolls into, which is we're talking about profitability for our content organization. We're talking about how many people we should hire and who we should hire, that all rolls into your budget. Now, we mentioned before, we have a limited amount of cash. We have $1.8 million in the bank. Now, we're also generating revenue over time, so generating more cash over time. Basically, what I wanna finalize and think about with our investors is how much risk should we take on in the business? Like, how aggressive should we be in hiring? How much growth should we forecast out and invest into um, while also playing it safe with the current economic environment? And so I'm most curious to see where we end up here. I think what we'll do is we'll have we'll have a measured approach in its stance to things. I, I don't think we'll go super risk on, but yeah, this is kind of where our meeting will hopefully end us up at. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I noticed that. I was like, oh, it's a lot of gifts, a lot of photos. It's how we run our all hands meetings, too. I love it. You can zoom in on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the other boss. Back for another video. <laughs> <laughs> You all saw the deck already. I figured we could just spend the entire time talking about the discussion topics. I laugh that every time you have good growth, you come back and say, but you definitely can't assume this is happening longer. And it's not every time. Every time. <laughs> um, I never really understand. Are you being too difficult on yourself? Are you being too conservative? But like usually when people have three months of growth, they're like, we're going to go fundraise. We know what's going on. We figured it out. 
Um, something's working, we want to lean into it. But I never get that sense from you. And so I don't know if it's because you don't really know what's working. It's working, but it's not like working in a way that you feel like is a real unlock. But something is working here. My point to all of that is you got to believe that you've got enough here to earn the right to get more money to test a little bit more aggressively. Because what eight, $1.8 $8 million does for you is it puts you on a life support. Like you can't do anything with that money. You just stay alive. You know, maybe it's not perfect. Maybe you can't get a $10, $15 million raise. Maybe you can't. Because like $2 million of ARR. Are... Why are we saying $2 million? I'm pretty sure we're at almost three now. That was way back in the day. We're at yeah, almost three. three. Now you're at three. Come on, you people. That was a month ago. Like, hey, I'll so. the <laughs> if you had unlimited money, what team would you hire to do what stuff? Like, how many people is that? Is it 10 million? Is it 4 million? Is it 1 million? Like, I don't have any sense for how uh, restrictive and, and cautious you're being compared to like what you could be doing. If I had unlimited money, this is what I would do on the business side. I would poach the lead for Revolve's ambassador program, and then I'd have them hire at least three, uh, two to three people. On the content team, I'd poach someone from Barstool and have them find, like, do actually whatever they want to, in terms of like building the brand identity we're looking for. And then to meet the customer demand on that, we'd hire a couple more CSMs for our current career success lead. She can handle the management. You have two people, you three people you just named that you were like, I want those people. Call them, how much do they cost? Probably a lot. <laughs> So maybe we can't afford them, or maybe you can, because you're pretty compelling, you're pretty compelling, and they get some equity, you raise you know, more money to figure out if you can hire a few more leaders. But like at some point in time, if you don't hire more leaders, you cannot work this company. I can only speak for myself. I think Vitaly feels probably differently. For the first time in my life, I'm hitting what I think is imposter syndrome in a way that I've never felt before. I think I've been blessed with like just some youthful brazen confidence for way too long, which has served me before. I'm questioning my own ability to lead this company to the degree at which I require the quality of this company to be. I, I, I don't have the belief in myself. And then to add on to that, like I'm also just like beat right now. So I probably need to take some time off, but it's Can I give a, you an imagery? Yeah. So you, you have those scales, like a lot on the scale, so it looks like this, right? Okay. What I'm talking about, right? The two scans in the middle, the foreground, that's done. Balanced, not balanced. You guys are here. Taking weight off of this side doesn't balance you out. It's still too heavy, right? Sure. So going on vacation, not gonna help. You come back to the same ship. So the only thing you can do is put something on the other end to balance it out. What's on the other end? Hiring some smart people to do some of the work. Like, you need to start, stop thinking that people and team are burden and scary and think, if you could get another Vitaly on your team, do you not want that? If you can have another John, do you not want that? I, I totally understand. Yes. I'm just, just talking you through, like, the internal struggles that I'm going through. Can I pose something that is always an option? You can hire a CEO to replace you. And we're fully, I, I don't, to be clear, I'm just surfacing this now because it's, like, truly in the moment, but I just, yeah. We're, we're fully cognizant of that, so. All right, board meeting, therapy session. Adjourned. Life advice, adjourned. For the YouTube though, Yuri, what do we have to do? Take a weekend off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll walk on the beach and have a romantic dinner together and rekindle your love for each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And after that, you can, you know, build a financial model and a pitch deck for your next race. Okay, we'll figure it out. <laughs> How'd you feel? I feel good. I feel energized. Yeah? Got a lot to do. I also do feel energized too. Excited about the future. Intimidated and a little bit scared, as I was expressing, but... The future is big. We need to <laughs> seize it. Yeah. Well, sounds like we should put together a game plan, and then we'll share it next week. See ya! I think we're shifting the definition of what our customer is. It's not necessarily a creator, but it's a business. And the, the whole world has not woken up yet, still somehow, to the fact that social media is just the new marketing channel. I agree. And Stan is the medium and vehicle through which to do that. We are hyper-intentional that we are here for people who are intentional about building a business through social media. Yes. Social media is just the, the new marketing medium through which they're generating sales. They have full intentions of committing and building a business. Yes.
this needs to be read somewhere. Cool, it's okay. We're filming it now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>